Well, today, we're taking a peek at some goodies for security. As you can see on my table in front of me, I have some Amcrest products from their NVR to three of their new AI-based cameras. Now, these are power over Ethernet or PoE-based cameras. They do offer Wi-Fi. They offer various uh, states of camera uh, connections. I do have uh, Ethernet cables run to various points in my house, and I'm glad to add more as I see fit. But today, we're going to actually do the setup of these cameras. We're going to start with the NVR, and that's what this first video is going to be. Then we're going to slip over to the cameras. Now, I actually have a bullet-style camera and then two turret-based cameras. Um, two of these are 5 megapixel. One of these is 8 megapixel. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to separate it into three videos. First here on the NVR. Then we're going to look at the 5 megapixel cameras. They're going to pretty much set up the same way, but we're going to look at it at the same time to look at the differences between them as well. And then the third final video is going to be the 8 megapixel 4K camera. So, let's start. Let's get into it. <laughs> Okay, just gonna cut the tape here at the top and we can open up the box. Let me get that out of the way. All right, and I'm gonna start at the top here. I know it's kind of out of camera view, but I'm gonna slide it out. So you can see how it's packaged here. Now this is the um, NV4208E-AI. Um, it does support up to that eight me or a 4K 8 megapixel camera. Let's uh, open up this little box here. So what do we have? All right. Power cord. I have some uh, mounting screws probably for the hard drives to put inside. This can support up to two eight terabyte hard drives. Does not include a hard drive. Um, so just so you're aware. Does have two uh, SATA drive cables, a manual, an ethernet cable, which I may not need because I have my own. Um, looks like two of the power for uh, for SATA drives, so two power uh, cables for the drives. Looks some leaflets in here on some important safety notices and stuff. And then this guy is, ah, oh yeah, a mouse. So if you have a local monitor, you can use the mouse. And then a nice warranty sheet to let you know that they have a unlimited lifetime technical support. So, all right, so that's the little box. I'll get that out of the way, most of that stuff. And we have the big guy. Now, this is designed to be set on a shelf. Um, I don't believe if, you know, if you know me, I have a, a, a rack actually in the back. Um, where I will be putting it in the rack. However, I don't believe they actually have rack mount capability. I don't see anything at least. So that would be one thing that I would I would urge Amcrest with something especially this large. Just having as an option, maybe even if I have to purchase the rack ears, that would be nice. Otherwise, I just have to have a shelf for it to place on. Not a big deal. All right, on the back. Power, fan, four, PoE ports for the cameras. This is an eight channel. They do offer a 16 channel. Then we have the LAN connection for this box itself. So it can connect to the internet and you can see it from wherever you are. There is a mic input and out. There's a USB port for probably maybe for external storage, VGA, HDMI, then some DIN switches, which I'll have to take a peek at exactly what those DIN switches control, but those are there. So, Let's get, it uh, looks like there's two screws on the back. Boom. One right there, one right there. And then this cover should slide off. Okay, those two screws are off. And I'm assuming, and I might be wrong. Oh, there's two more. I didn't see that. Right there, right there. So I gotta take those off. Pay attention to the side of the case, not the top. And exactly like I thought, slides back and lifts off. And then you can see here where we have nice open space for our hard drives that we will be adding. Now I don't have two drives. I'm just gonna put in an extra drive that I have right now 
in here. That way we have storage to start. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, let me grab that. I will zoom in a little bit when I get a little closer here to actually put the drive in. I just pulled out the little bag of screws and we are gonna use four of these for one drive and then I'm gonna hold on to the other four. Um, and like I said, this is a temporary drive. This is more for just this, doing this video because I had it laying around, it's a one terabyte. So it's not as big as I would want it to be. However, it will work for this purpose. Now, if you actually look, I'm gonna show you. You can see the first two holes here actually have a larger hole so you can slide it into place. So I'm gonna get the first two screws on the drive. Then we're gonna kind of set it down, slide it down, and then there's four more holes. I'm sure you only use two of those, depending on which drive you have. Um, looks like I'm probably gonna use the middle set of holes. But uh, the holes closest to the connection point, I'm just gonna loosely put them in there. And then just loosely put them in there like that. And then we're gonna slide it in. So let me get a little closer. So you can see these are the two that I'm gonna go to. And down, and then they slide in. Now the drive's in place. So now if I flip it over, you can see these two holes are now available to put screws in. So I'm just gonna hold it there with my hands, and then I can get these going, get these started at least, and get them. And then I can tighten the last two, the first two down that we set up. Always easier with two hands, but that's all right. Okay, so now we got that. I'll take that, tighten that one down, tighten that one down, and now the drive is secure. All right, so that's where that one's gonna go. I am gonna open up one of these uh, data cables, the SATA cables, actually. And that is gonna connect onto this guy, like that. And then power cable. I'm gonna go ahead and connect power cable onto that like that. And then you can see the connections down here. Now this one's SATA one, SATA two. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect this into SATA one, which is gonna be like that, which maybe this drive would have been SATA one, but it doesn't matter. And then power is gonna connect onto power here like that. And then this is just uh, for the next drive, right? And I'm gonna just go ahead and leave this kind of hanging out here, out of the way. And then we can take our cover, slide it back into place, make sure that it's actually in correctly. And then we're gonna put the screws back on. NVR is ready to receive power. And of course, I talked about the USB port, of course, uh, the mouse, if nothing else. So I'm gonna plug the mouse into that USB port. I do have a network connection that's going back to my ethernet switch. So I just brought that up in here. I'm not gonna use the cable it came with. I'm gonna plug that into the LAN port. So that's the one that's not the eight, right? This guy, USB. I'm gonna plug an HDMI cable into this monitor I have right here into the HDMI output. So I'm gonna do that next. So I'm gonna get all these cables connected. Then I'm gonna go ahead and plug the power cable in. And then there is a power switch right next to where the plug is. There is a rocker switch right there. As soon as I kick that on, I can hear the fan and you can see the light come on. Okay, let's get a camera set up with the monitor. Okay, so so far it's just been the Amcrest logo. It's just booting up still. It's only been a 15 seconds since I stopped. We'll give it a minute here. We'll see if I need to connect a keyboard, but they only provided the mouse, so we'll see what happens. And there we are. Okay, so we're gonna select. Uh, oh, not me. All right, doesn't like to run on quartz. NTSC, that's the standard I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna hit next. We're gonna go central time. It is, let's see what time it is, three, five. yep, that's the correct time, so it must be pulling it off the network. Uh, admin, I can set a password. I'm gonna do that real quick. All right, so I'm just gonna show you, I already got my password entered in twice. 
but I'm going to do the prep. So I'm just going to put something in here. So if you see here, um, we see the one, two, three and everything lowercase. If I hit shift, it'll go to uppercase. If I hit shift again, it'll go to lowercase. Then it goes to this keyboard. Then it goes to the number. Then it goes back to uppercase. So you have to, if you go between upper and lowercase, you have to hit this several times between the two, just so you're aware. All right, I'm obviously blurring out the prompt question because that doesn't actually uh, cover up, but I'm going to hit next now that I have all three of those. Now there's an unlock pattern that you can, looks like you can actually, you know, draw whatever. Uh, and that gets annoying, but uh, I'm going to do that real quick. Actually, I'm going to show you this, how this works. So if you actually, you know, put, click and drag, it'll actually go with wherever you're going to go, right? And so, <laughs> yeah, I just mess around. So I'm going to back, I'm going to do that again. All right, as soon as you do two of those exactly the same, it brings you to the un password protection. Looks like email address, and then you can fill out three different question answers. I'm gonna do this off camera and I'll be back. Okay, I got those entered, hit save. It's gonna ask if I wanna check for auto updates. That's her, that's fine. Device name, um, I think, what's that? Let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and leave all these default, mouse sensitivity and everything. Uh, let's hit next. Uh, date format, start time, DST. I'm gonna leave all this stuff the same for now. And we can probably always come back at holidays. Nah. All right. I have a single net. You can see that it actually is pulling an IP. That's obviously why we're able to get everything. If you want to change your uh, DNS stuff down here, you can. I'm going to leave them as it is. Um, and then there's a cell phone client. And you can, that's... So let's grab that while we're at it. On the left QR. Now the right QR I am... Um, blocking just because it is the device uh, uh, serial number, sorry. All right, so that brings us to this page, which I can click on my app store to bring me to the Apple app store and download the Amcrest View Pro. So I'm gonna do that real quick. Now I'm gonna go ahead and allow all using. That's fine, send me notifications. You can welcome to, let's start. Let's see, we're gonna connect to an NVR IP. Uh, I can put in the IP address that it said there. Let's see what it is again. Let's hit back. 1.185. So 192.168.1.185. And I'm going to leave the port information what it is. I'm going to hit next. Go back to that one. Next. Device, a name. I'm going to call that Amcrest NVR. And then ask for your admin and password. Make sure you put your password in that you put in. So I put that in there. I'm going to hit start live view. Let's see what happens here. All right, walk through. Would you like to learn how the major function is app? Nah, not right now. Walk through, you can visit it anytime. All right, so it looks like we are connected to that. Um, let's go to device manager, Amcrest NVR. Let's hit edit. So there's all the information we're good there for now so we're gonna just go on this one we're gonna hit next um, right now we don't have any items this is registration I'm just gonna hit next because we don't have anything connected anyway hit next next that's uh, unformatted there we go I'm gonna click on that one and click format and hit save it's gonna format and that's probably why we're getting the beeps is because it can't use it because it's not formatted now it's normal Hit apply. Okay, hit apply. Let's go back. Thank you for purchasing our product. Save. All right, we are fully set up and ready to re receive camera data. Now I'm on my computer now, and so this is just through the web browser. You can see NVR Web Access. I just put the IP address in up here, that 1.185 that I have, um, admin, and then my password that I put in, or your password that you put in, right? and then hit log in. And now we can do, there's the AI, playback, alarm, duration, display. So manage and view artificial intelligence and face recognition information and settings. Um, let's take a peek. So obviously we're gonna set this up a lot when we get the cameras going. Um, see if actually I'm in live. Ah, so up here on the top, up here, these are the tabs. 
if I click on playback, yep, look at that. It go, I can go between live and playback real quick and easy. Um, and then if I actually bring up a tab and click that same tab, it brings me back to the main menu. Um, AI settings is going to be interesting to see the face recognition and stuff on camera as we actually add in those uh, AI-based cameras. So that's going to be interesting to see how that actually works. And I'm going to actually be doing reviews on all these products as well. So display, we can figure, configure display settings, VGA or and HDMI, um, resolution, um, so I can actually go full 4K, it looks like, on this one. Um, hit save, because this is a 4K display. And so, right. Yeah, I guess uh, we're done with the NVR setup. We're going to be ready for the next step. So what was interesting, if you actually make a change in here, like the display settings, uh, it did restart the actual item. That's why I actually logged out. So if I can bring this back down to like 1080 and then hit save, um, it does need to reboot in order to do that. So that's something I didn't notice. All right, let's head, uh, let's finish things up. Now the setup actually went pretty clean. Um, the only thing that I didn't do yet is actually set up the remote access. So if you were not on your local area network and you were off site um, through the wide area network port on your router, I haven't set that up yet. But I figured I'd, uh, I'd get everything working with the cameras and everything like that. And I'll probably do that maybe in a separate video. Um, now, on this screen, everything that I did on my computer for the most part, I can get back to here. So at any time, if I right click the mouse, it'll bring up a menu that I can see the settings here. But I can always go back or down to uh, uh, main menu um, and go through the settings and system and everything like that. So everything is actually doable on here and everything can be done with just the mouse. You don't need an extra keyboard or anything like that. Um, so as long as you have a monitor that you can attach it to, pretty simple to set up. Now, one thing I do wish that it did have in all reality is quick and easy setup for um, offsite access, right? So that I didn't have to fully set that up. But from what I can tell, you have to go through the DDNS setup and then make uh, throughputs on your router on different ports. So it does have a little bit of a manual setup on that. So I'm probably going to do a video on that separately altogether. So now that we have the NVR set up, that comes to a close on this part of the setup video. The next step is getting some cameras attached to this guy. And we're going to take a peek at the quality of those as well. Um, more on this, these, this set of videos is going to be more on the setup of it not a review technically of it um, and we're going to do pretty much most of the setup right here uh, that way if you do set it up all by yourself basically plugged in directly then you can move it to wherever you're going to move it to once you plug it in and get it powered back up it's just going to go right into where it's supposed to be so that's what i'm doing we're going to set up here in the studio and then uh, installing it is pretty simple so that said thank you for watching here today in this one if you want to watch the next one it is linked here at the end it's linked also in the video uh, in the description down below i'm going to link all of the other videos that i'm doing on this one so stay tuned the five mega the five megapixel cameras are up next so hope to see you in that one thanks for watching we'll see you soon